Um, Teresa, I'd love to start off with good news. <laughs> Start off with good news, which is the uh, recent victory in Alameda County around fines and fees. Yes, um, I will say that as an attorney at EBCLC with student loans, I cannot underscore the importance of Sharon's very, very um, inspirational work. Um, and so, uh, here in Alameda County, uh, my colleague uh, Brandon Green and I run our debt-free justice work. Um, at EBCLC. Uh, in December of last year, um, we were instrumental um, in helping to, or in pushing the Board of Supervisors um, in Alameda County to pass an ordinance um, repealing uh, criminal justice administrative fees in Alameda County. So those are probation supervision fees, um, uh, public defender fees, uh, as an aside, yes, that free public defender that you're guaranteed um, is not actually free, or was not actually free in Alameda County before we came around. Um, and the Sheriff's Work Alternative Program fees. Um, and the, our campaign led to a complete repeal of these fees and the discharge of over $44 million in outstanding debt. Um, and that is... That was uh, for over 170 accounts, 170,000 accounts in Alameda County. Um, so that's, uh, you know, 170,000 cases that were um, touched by our advocacy. Um, and this work started because uh, in our traffic and court debt clinic, which uh, we started as an offshoot of the general clinic that Sharon was talking about, um, where uh, another one of the, the big issues that was coming in through the door were driver's license suspensions for failure to pay traffic tickets. Um, and so people's licenses were indefinitely suspended for not being able to pay something rela related to a speeding violation or a no registration violation. Um, and so we, we opened up this clinic to capture any and all people off the street who had an issue related to traffic or court debt. And what we began seeing were people with bills from Central Collections, Alameda County Central Collections, which collects on um, uh, criminal court debt and fines and fees associated with criminal convictions. We were finding that people just, in, and in other parts of our clean slate practice, we help people get expungements, um, reduce felonies to misdemeanors. And uh, we were seeing that just as people were getting back on their feet, just as they were able to put their convictions behind them and they landed a steady job or maybe they landed a temporary job that would have propelled them into something more steady, their wages were being garnished um, for criminal court debt that they owed on cases that were very, very old. Um, so though they had, uh, quote unquote, served their debt to society, they were still being handed bills for outstanding monetary debt that they owed on their convictions. Um, and uh, their wages were being garnished at 25% after taxes, uh, which meant that people could not afford their rent after, their, um, after the 25% was shaved off. Uh, this was um, causing a widening of um, racial uh, inequities that we were seeing um, in Alameda County. So just as taking a step back to, to give you a, 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 a holistic, holistic snapshot of the picture, 80% um, to 90% of people accused of crimes in Alameda County um, are low income and qualify for the Public Defender's Office. A randomized sample from the Public Defender's Office of, um, their, uh, of, of their clients, the great majority have incomes of $900 or less um, in, here in the Bay Area. An average income of a white family in Oakland is $110,000, whereas the average income of a black family is $30,000. And that doesn't even include uh, or incorporate the intergenerational um, wealth disparities that Sharon was talking about between black and white families. Um, we also know through data-driven research that um, black and brown people are disproportionately policed. Um, and that data comes directly from Oakland, in fact. Um, in Oakland, black folks are 10 times more likely than white folks to be stopped and almost all the use of force incidents um, are against black people um, in Oakland. 
and with this, black people are being displaced at um, uh, astronomical rates, uh, becoming homeless, flooding homeless shelters. Uh, the work of my dear colleague Osha Newman is to um, represent homeless individuals, and he's seeing a spike um, in uh, black uh, clients and black families. And at the same time, our criminal justice system, um, experiencing budgetary um, uh, shortages, have passed the cost of administering our criminal justice system onto people who are uh, charged and convicted of crimes. And so people in Alameda County have to pay these mandatory uh, fees in order to, um, in order to, or as a result of being entangled in our criminal justice system. Um, and so, you know, this uh, uh, awful reality is something that our traffic clinic um, sees every day. And so through our policy advocacy and our relentless Public Records Act requests, meetings with the chief probation officer, uh, research that we did with the Berkeley Policy Advocacy Clinic, um, our students mobilizing and organizing with our community-based organizations. Uh, we successfully pressured the Board of Supervisors to take this extraordinary step. Um, and I can talk a little bit more about our, uh, the work that, that we're doing on the statewide level as well. Yeah, I'd love to get to that, but actually before that I'd love to talk a little bit um, with Theo and Sharon, we talked about some classic ways EBCLC does the work. So mm -hmm. in Theo's case, meeting folks where they are and lowering barriers to actually come to legal advice. In Sharon's case, it was about not creating any substantive barriers. You don't have to have a certain type of legal. I'm really curious about your view on our ability to collaborate with community partners and how everything we do is in collaboration. and. I'd love to hear the experience of this campaign mm -hmm. as, a, as an example of EBCLC's work in collaboration with others. Yeah, um, so we are effective and successful because we work in collaboration with our community partners. Um, we, Brandon and I have both found that um, our community partners um, are hungry to work with lawyers and law students. Um, we bring extra resources to the table. We bring um, innovative ideas and energy. We bring legal, um, sharp legal strategies and tactics that they no wouldn't normally um, have in their pocket to use against bad actors that they, that they encounter. Um, and at the same time, we've also, uh, Brennan and I have also realized in our lawyering work that um, impact, uh, high impact work systems change work doesn't just happen in the courtroom. Um, it happens uh, in newspapers, on Twitter, um, uh, you know, the good Twitter. <laughs> um, uh, um, it happens um, in uh, city council um, rooms and, and halls. And, and so, you know, with the times that we're in, uh, we've discovered that lawyers discovered, this is something that has always been known, but um, with, especially in the times that we're in, lawyers really need to be versatile, um, and we uh, need to be in collaboration with non-lawyers in order to get our work done, in order to bring real change to our clients. And so we apply this philosophy um, in our teaching with our students. We bring our students to, tomorrow we have a meeting with a reporter from the uh, SF Chronicle about um, these third party diversion programs uh, for anger management or, if, uh, or domestic violence or driving with a suspended license even, uh, where they charge really hefty fees um, for you to complete the program. And, uh, only if you complete the program will you, will you avoid having charges filed against you or you can get the case dismissed. And so this is another uh, criminalization of poverty that we're seeing um, whereby people who, who cannot afford to pay end up entangled um, where someone with money can, can exit out. And we actually only heard about this issue in partnership with Urban Peace Movement, um, an organization that works with youth um, in Alameda County. And so, um, you know, we, uh, we take our students to Sacramento with us. We take our students to um, the city of Berkeley or city of Oakland where we're in those city council 
um, boardrooms, um, trying to influence policy makers and decision makers. And so, um, it's specifically on the campaign itself, um, we worked very closely with the Justice Reinvestment Coalition, uh, where we uh, uh, strategized um, the extent of the campaign. We made sure that the campaign would not adversely, uh, we, that the, um, the repeal of the fees would not adversely affect the uh, agendas of our community-based organizations, which was very important to our partners. Um, yeah, we, 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 our role is to put ourselves out of a job and only with collaboration can we do that. Okay, thank you, thank you very much.